Hey kings and queens, I hope you're doing well and welcome to my channel. So I'm Rachel from Intentional Adulting and I make videos all about what I'm learning on this life journey. So if that interests you, subscribe to the channel. So today I am filming a couple videos um, about the lessons I've learned on this whole house buying journey. So my husband and I, we bought our first home in March of this year, praise be to God. Um, it was a whirlwind of a journey. Um, it didn't go smoothly. Like I was that one praying that <laughs> our house buying process will be like four or five weeks because I, I have, well, I don't personally know, but I, I know of people whose house buying process has taken four, five, six weeks, literally from start to finish. And that is absolutely amazing to be able to buy a house in such a short space of time. I just didn't want any stress whatsoever during my house buying process. But I guess God had other plans. Our house buying process took literally just under six months. Um, we were so, so, so stressed because um, we didn't want our mortgage in principle to expire. So sometimes when you get a mortgage in principle or a decision in principle from um, a bank, um, sometimes it has a an expiration date tied to it. So sometimes it's only valid for six months. And if you don't complete your house purchase within that six months, you'll have to reapply for a new mortgage in principle and the bank will reassess your financial situation again. Um, yeah, because, you know, within six months, it's quite reasonable to expect some people's financial situations to have changed. So we really didn't want to um, have to reapply for a new mortgage in principle because we were aware that everyone in our chain were working towards exchanging and completing on all the houses in our chain before the end of the stamp duty holiday. Um, and yeah, by our mortgage principle expiring, that will just muck everything up. So talking about our chain, um, chains are definitely another cause of stress in the whole house buying process. So I have done a video previously about what a chain is and what it, what it means to be in a chain. So I won't you know, go over that again, there's no need to, um, to re-explain that. I'll link the video up wherever it is. Um, but yeah, essentially we were in a chain. Um, of course we were first time buyers, so we were at the bottom of the chain. And then I believe there were about three other parties in our chain. So the owner of this house that we live in now, um, or the previous owner, she was the person above us. Um, above us, And then there was um, the person whose house she was buying. And then that person needed to find a house and buy that house. So I think there were four of us, or potentially even five of us in this chain. Um, yeah, it was just so, so, so stressful. Number one, because when we viewed this house, the seller gave us the impression that she wanted things done ASAP. She, we viewed this house in September, I believe it was, and she was like, well, yeah, I hope we all, I hope everything goes through by December, by Christmas time. She literally said, we should all be in our houses by Christmas. So that would have been um, October, November, December, like a three month, 12 week roughly period, which is reasonable, which sounds very realistic. Um, yeah, 12 weeks, four times three is 12 weeks. <laughs> so what's it called? Yeah, we, I guess that's a mistake that we made as first time buyers. We were quite naive. It's not what your seller tells you that goes. Um, it's, you know, your the seller does not dictate how long the whole house, the conveyancing process will take. There's There are so many elements that can impact how long things take. So just because he or she tells you, yeah, well, we hope to sign on the dotted line in 12 weeks, it doesn't mean that it's gonna take 12 weeks. So just don't even let what they tell you impact anything that you're planning just you focus on god and focus on you getting everything that you need to get you know get all your ducks in a row in terms of documents 
ID, etc. Make sure you do your bit so at least you're not dragging or slowing down the chain um, and that if there are any delays, it can just be blamed on the other parties. So um, I guess going back to the chain, she gave us the impression that she was she wanted to move very, very quickly. And because of that, we didn't ask her questions like, how far have you got with finding a new property? Like, have you put an offer on a property? We didn't ask her these very pivotal questions. We just assumed like, oh, okay, she wants to move in like three months. So that probably means she's probably found somewhere to move to already. And that was a mistake um, because it was, it, I think it reached the four month mark and she still hadn't found somewhere to move to. She, we, we were told by our estate agent that the first house she wanted to move to, something happened to that. I don't know if she even put an offer in it, I don't know, but that didn't end up happening. So then she had to start from scratch and look for new properties and it was very very annoying it's it, it is very annoying when your seller is ve being very particular about the type of property they want to move to or like the area they want to move to so our seller she was very adamant that she wants a house that is within the catchment area of the school she wanted her son to attend or something like that. Her son was changing schools and therefore the new house that they wanted to move to, it had to be within a certain area. And obviously that just automatically shuts a whole lot of potential houses out <laughs> and it really narrows their search to only a few available houses. And we were quite annoyed with that because she didn't tell us in the beginning that you know, I'm, I'm only looking for a sp specific type of house in a specific area, because obviously that really narrows the chances of her finding it, especially finding it within a six month period. Um, so if I can give you any advice, when you're viewing a property, definitely ask the seller, like, what, like, what is your situation? Like, have you already found somewhere to move to like have you put an offer on it has it been accepted how far along are you so that you can kind of gauge like oh okay like they're literally in the position that we are like right at the beginning they're doing viewing so this is probably going to, going to, going to take a bit of a while um if they found a house if they've offered on it etc that's music to your ears but just try and find out this information so that you're not surprised two three months down the line and if for whatever reason her or his or her house purchase falls through sometimes that does happen um but at least you know what is happening you don't have to start asking questions and interrogating your estate agent to find out what is holding things up um so yeah our seller was definitely a cause of um delay <laughs> in our chain because it took her four months to, to find somewhere that her whole family liked and that they actually offered on and had their offer accepted. Um, and then I think it was only at that four month mark that our estate agent then came and told us that actually like the person who was above her in the chain, or I think it was the next party in the chain, they hadn't even found their house to move to and they were only now just starting the process of viewings and looking at houses. So we were just, we could not believe what we were being told. Like, and again, it's our fault for not asking these questions right at the beginning. Like how many parties are in this chain and what stage are they each act in this process. Not that it probably would have put us off pursuing this house because this house was the best house that we had viewed out of a bunch. So we were willing, we were willing to wait actually. <laughs> Even though we wanted to be in here before our wedding and before, you know, stamp duty, whatever, blah, blah, blah. We kind of, because this was our number one house in terms of our preference, we were willing to wait as long as it took, but we would have liked to have known from the get-go that, okay, 
you know, what stage everyone was at. That would have probably reduced a tiny bit of the stress and uncertainty that we experienced in this whole purchasing process. Um, but yeah, it came to the fact that around month four, month 4.5, we found out that someone else in the chain hadn't even found their new house to move to and they were starting from scratch. They hadn't even, um, actually I think what it was is they had found a house but they hadn't had their mortgage confirmed and we were just like, like can't, we, we can't even make this up. You can't, nothing is secure if you don't have a mortgage in place unless you're a cash buyer. Um, so we, there was a lot of waiting in our whole house purchasing process because of the people in the chain. Um, and I guess I want to make this video helpful for you. So again, your takeaways, if you're a first time buyer, you haven't done this before, you're trying to learn as, mu as many tips as possible for your own process. Find out how many people are in your chain if you're not buying a property that is chain free. And, you know, find out at what stage are each party in the chain, because you need to know roughly how long this process will take. <sighs> yeah, you need to know. <laughs> it's so stressful when you're actually living in this experience and you just don't know, like, how long things are going to take. And perhaps you have a deadline, whether you're due to have a baby in four months or you're planning to start a new job in four months or whatever it is getting married um it just causes a lot of stress so any small bits of information that you can gauge um i think will will help will help you in this process so um again let me look at my notebook and see if i've forgotten anything um yeah i've got here as well another another tip for you is to you know, call up your essay agent regularly, twice a week, and ask them for an update. Like, what's the latest on the parties in the chain and them finding their house, getting their mortgage, etc. Don't wait for your essay agent to call you because remember, they're not working for you; they're working for the seller. So, um, pester them and ask them for regular updates because you need to know. And um, Another tip that I have here actually is I put here to don't get your mortgage offer um, with your bank, with your lender until um, until the seller of the house you want to buy has had um, their offer accepted. So don't you don't start your process until your seller has offered has offered um has offered on a house and had that accepted because from the time that you you get your mortgage offer the clock starts ticking and you don't want your mortgage offer to expire um and, ha and then have to restart that process because if that happens nearer towards exchange completion that can really muck things up and potentially break cause a break in the chain at the very last moment so you don't want that to happen so what I would say is, um, I know you're potentially, you want to just prove that you have everything together, everything on your side, ready to go. You've got your offer accepted, mortgage in principle, your actual mortgage offer. I, I would say just to hold off with, with your lender and don't actually get that mortgage offer from your lender until your seller has given you the um, guarantee that yes they've had their offer accepted on their house and they are now starting the whole conveyancing pro process for the house they want to purchase so um, the reason why I say that is because when sometimes um, some mortgage products they come with, with a fee you have to actually pay money to receive a mortgage from a lender um, we had to pay was it £999 I think our fee was yeah, not all mortgage products are free. So if for whatever reason your mortgage offer expires and you have to reapply for a new one, you risk having to repay that fee to the lender to get to get a new product, essentially. And you don't want to be out of pocket. You don't want to be doing that. So yeah, just 
just wait <laughs> until your seller can, can confirm that yes, they have everything good to go and then you will then start your process. And I think it's within your power to say, I'm not gonna get, I'm gonna pause and not get my mortgage that like, confirmed or secured until you do your bit because you're a first time buyer. You don't have anything dragging you or delaying you. You're like their dream in terms of a buyer type. So you actually have to have it within your power, within your gift to say, no, I'm not gonna get my mortgage secured until you get your offer um, approved and accepted on the house you want to buy. You have that within your negotiating power as a first time buyer. So, you know, be brave enough to tell the estate agent that because they're gonna be trying to get you to, you know, pers you know, get your mortgage in, pla in place, et cetera, et cetera, because they want their commission at the end of the day. They don't want the sale to go, to, to not go through. So you just keep your, your priorities and yourself in mind and just put yourself first, basically, is what I would say. Um, let me just see if there's anything else here. No, I think I've exhausted all of the tips I have for you. Um, but yeah, our chain didn't collapse, but it nearly did because um, when it reached, I think it was the five month mark, the person at the top of the chain, at the very top of our chain was like, these people are wasting time. Like he was starting to threaten that he's gonna pull out. Um, so it nearly collapsed because there were just so many delays caused by various parties, um, our, our solicitor, our seller, someone else in the chain. Yeah, it was a very tedious process. Um, but hopefully me sharing my experience with you um, gives you some insight into what you may have to prep yourself for and um, some very useful questions to ask your estate agent. Um, yeah. Let me know if you've got any questions about this. If I don't know the answer, of course I'll just say I don't know the answer. But if I do, of course I will share um, what I know with you to help you on your own house buying journey. Let me know if you found this video helpful by clicking the like button. Also subscribe and check out my first time buyers playlist for all the other videos I've done in this series towards us buying our first house and everything I've learned along the way. Um, yeah, and I will definitely see you soon for the next video. So thanks for your time today and I will speak to you soon. Take care.